Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be talking about the data types in Python and I don't mean the data types like for example float or int or um, string. I mean the data types such as lists or arrays, or dictionaries or maps, um, uh, or sets and tuples. And these data types are more where um, you put data into those types uh, rather than what they actually are. For example, instead of an int where int is a number uh, or string is a string as a character, these are where you would put strings and numbers and so on. So without confusing you any further in that, into that, let's go ahead and get started with arrays first. Um, so if you don't know what an array is, it's actually pretty simple. It's a, it's a line of data. Let's just put it that way, right? Um, so you have like a list of data, it could be any list, it doesn't matter, it could be names, it could be places or whatever, however it might be. Um, it doesn't have to be a specific set of like category or anything, it could be whatever you want, it's just a list. Um, that being said, in other programming languages, uh, these arrays, uh, in Python calls them lists, these arrays are usually a specific data type, meaning that if you have an array that is uh, only numbers or only ints, that array must contain data that are only ints. If you try to put a string in, in an array that's only int, it's gonna it's gonna run you into an error. Um, Python, you don't have that uh, you don't have that blockage. So in Python, you can have an array with anything you want. Um, so let's let's take one for example. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do an array that's information about me. Um, so like my name, you know, my house, car, whatever, uh, just to get things started. So let's call uh, an array my info. And as you can see, I already typed some of this out, but you'll you'll see. So name, uh, as you can see, some people call me Mo Ali. My name is Oct my official name is Oct Ali, but let's just say Mo Ali. So Mo Ali, um, and then. Uh, age is, let's say, 32. Uh, I have a Lexus, that's my car. Um, I've got a house, that's a townhouse. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I, work, in, I work in DevOps, so... Um, and I go this, you know, my my name, my age, the kind of car I drive, or the make of car I drive, the type of house I have, and the the uh, the uh, field that I work in. And so that is my my information, right? However, you um, these these this information isn't necessarily um, categorized. It's just sort of just an arbitrary list. I can have I can start with age. I can start with car make or whatever it is and then you would have to figure that you know which one is which instead of uh instead of having this format but let's just stick with the stick with the arrays for the time being now how would we access for example my my age right you can't just say my info dot age and then it would return 32 no that's not exactly how it works so you would actually have to return the index number and this is how index number works in arrays or lists, in any language whatsoever, the index number always starts with zero. This is the zeroth element or index value, uh, whichever one you wish to say. This is the zeroth element. This is the first element, second element, third element, fourth element. I know I have five items here. You and I will think that, oh, he's got five items in his, in his array. But in programming languages, you have four plus zero. So, I mean, four plus one, zeroth being that value. So you have five items because it starts with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. So if I access my info and I say my info, not my into, my info one, I get 32, which is my age. So fairly simple, right? Um, so let's say, let's do another one. Let's say that I want to get my my career or my, my you know, what my, um, what my job title is or so on. So I would say my info four and I get DevOps and as you can see, DevOps is a type string. It's got these single quotes. I put them in single quotes. I could put them in double quotes. It doesn't matter. It makes no difference. Um, where the uh, age is actually an int. So if I do, for example, my you know my uh, type of my info type four, I get class string. And if I do type one, it's class int. So Python automatically uh, discerns what each element is. So as I said before, um, 
Each variable in, in Python is actually a pointer to a value. And it's the same case here. Each element of these is actually a pointer to a value. That's why in, in other programming languages where you might need to have the same type of, of uh, uh, items in your, in your array, for example, if your array is only a string, it has all of them have to be a string, or if it's an int, all of them have to be an int, and so on. In Python, it's not the case uh, because they point to different um, spaces in memory rather than actually containing it in an actual array. So uh, without confusing you too much further, let's see what else you can do with with uh, with arrays. So as I've said, you can you can get the information starting with it with the element number zero. Um, however, what if I want to add something? Uh, to to my array. So let's say that like I want to add um, my ethnicity, right? So I can say there. So this is a a Python built-in uh, function that is built into the arrays or lists, right? So you can do dot append, and then append adds it to the end of the list. If you look at this description, especially in B Python, it gives you this append object to the end of the list, meaning that it would end up after DevOps. And my, I can say my ethnicity is Asian. So now if I take a look at my info, I've got this. Oh, by the way, I probably should have explained this. If you just type in my info, you get the whole list. Uh, or whatever you created, you get the whole list if you don't have any index value number added to it. But so if you take a look at after DevOps now, I get this Asian. So now if I say my info 5, Asian. It's pretty simple. So Let's say that I want to, for example, um, remove this one or remove any of them, uh, for example, for that matter. So I can do my info dot remove, and then it says remove the first occurrence of value. So I would have to type in Asian, and then if I if I look at my info five, it's not there anymore. I get an index list is out of range. This is the error that you would get if you're trying to access an element that is not there. So if you take it like a my info, now that I've removed it, you see that Asian is actually gone. Um, so this error, you, okay, so uh, foreshadowing here a little bit, pay attention to the error types in Python. You, we will be using them later uh, in the series. This is an index error, meaning that you know, the the definition says the index is out of range, but this index error, it's just, it's it's a, it's it's an error that only that Python lists return. So, uh, or whatever else can can be used to uh, with element number declaration or calls. So if you can call with an element number, you can get an index error. Okay, let's move on. So. Now that we've got uh, a few of the methods that you can do with a list, like append and remove, let's say that we want to do a remove and a copy. For example, if you take a look, like take a look at my info again, and so on, I would want. Let's say that I want to get DevOps, and somehow I want to remove it. Like basically, like say that I am removing it and I'm checking it off a list, and so I'm uh, and doing whatever with it. I can just do my info dot pop by itself, and if I do th if I do this, it's going to return DevOps, but it's actually going to it's also going to remove it from this list. So return DevOps as you saw. Now if I take a look at my info again, it's gone from DevOps. Uh, DevOps is gone from the list. So the idea of this is basically saying that okay. We're gonna check a list of items out of this uh, out of this uh, list of things to do, for example, and then once once we completed them, we can just go ahead and remove um, the last the last particular one. So what pop does is it removes the last element or the last item, uh, which is DevOps in this case, and and, and gives you that same uh, value. So. I can say my info dot pop, and if it's a list of things to do, and I'm doing it in descending order, my info or you know things to do dot pop, and then uh, I've gone ahead and I've removed it from the uh, from the array, and I can say that things to complete, uh, things completed 
uh, add this particular thing. So let's do ahead and let's go ahead and do something like that real quick. Rather than just talking about it, makes it makes it seem more confusing. Let's go ahead and actually do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear my screen so we we uh, don't get any confusion. So let's start with things to do, and I'm going to make this as equal to an empty array. Um, and then things completed, right, is equal to another empty array. So things to do. Uh, I've got to, let's say, clean up my room. So things to do. Um, do uh, dot add or append, however you want to do this. I'm just going to use append um, because I like using append. And so things to do dot append, I'm going to say clean my room. And I'm going to add a few more. So study for um, study for something. Study for class, for example, right? So if I look at things to do now, I've got two items in my in my list slash array. And same thing as before, if I call zero, it's a full on array, nothing different. Um, so now, as I, you know, I'm going to do this in descending order because that's what pop allows me to do. Um, but as I do this in descending order, um, I want to add it to things completed, right? So let's say things to do, uh, or sorry, things completed, right? Things completed dot append is equal to things to do. And when I say it's equal to, it's going to take stuff from things to do dot pop and so on. So basically, just like in math, how you do everything in the parentheses first, um, things is exactly the same thing here. So this is the most, uh, how do I say it? It's the most inside uh, aspect of this one line, right? So if you look at this, since this is the most inside of any parentheses whatsoever, apart from this, which has nothing in it, um, so it's going to do this part first. So things to do, pop, which is going to take um, my last item, which is study for class. And then it's going to remove that. And then this part, the outside part of my um, uh, uh, method call for this list is going to do that second. So it's going to remove this. And then as we saw before, pop actually returns whatever you removed and then deletes it from the list. So it's going to return this and delete it. And then when it returns this to this append method, it's going to append adds it to the list. So if you take a look at it now, it's done, no errors. So now we say things completed. We have this item from the list, the study for class and things to do. We only have the one thing. So it removed it from the things to do, which is the most inside uh, part of this call, and then added it to the uh, things completed, which is the outside part of this call. It did the inside first and then the outside second, just like how you do in math, um, where you do the innermost, the, everything in the parentheses and the innermost parentheses first, then the outer ones will go. Um, so that's that's an easy one to um, uh, to sort of understand if you remember basic math in high school. Um, so that's a few uh, a few methods that you can use with with list. If you want to get a full list of them, um, you can do like insert, count, and sort, and so on. Uh, if you want to do, if you wanted to go ahead and do that, let's let's go through a few of them. Uh, not that's particularly uh, pop and append, obviously, um, but a full list of them you'll have to go through like W three schools or or some sort of like Google like you know Python list methods and so on, and you can take a look at what's available. Um, so, or if you have B Python, you can just type in one of these arrays that you've got and just say dot, and then this is the full list right here that you can do. So extend, remove, clear, index, reverse, and so on. Um, so let's go ahead and add more things to things to do real quick, and then we'll do a few more of those methods and, and go from there. So uh, things to do dot append, uh, I've got to wash dishes. I've also got to take a shower. Um, um, in fact, I think there is a way. Let's take a look at it real quick. So Python merge lists, because I haven't done this in a while. 
joining two lists. Yeah, so if I've got this list, uh, and I've got that list, so I should put them together. So list one plus list two, list two is equal to list three, right? So let's just make another list here. So um, more things to do. This is just gonna be a temporary list. So it's equal to, um, what else do I have to do around the house? Organize my office, uh, clean up my attic, I think that's about, oh, um, do laundry. Right, so now if I say that things to do is equal to things to do, plus more things to do, now I should have them all in my list. See? Now this this right here, it, you know, what I did was I took the original list of things to do, which might have been just like either one of these things or two of these things, and then I added them together with more links to do, more things to do. So I did this part first, and then I took the result of this and added it back to things to do. So I took the original list and then the new list, and then put it back, put that value in the original list. So. It goes on this side first and then draw a back arrow up, two things to do, and then I get this. Okay, so that being said, um, let's go ahead and talk about nested arrays. So I was gonna talk about dictionary and maps uh, second, but I think it's best if we stick to arrays just for a little bit longer and then we'll talk about dictionary maps and how they sort of um, how they sort of, uh, how you can join them together. And most of JSON is actually, if you ever uh, worked with JSON before, this is gonna be very similar data structure to you. All right, so how am I good on time? I'm pretty good on time. All right, so let's take a look at nested arrays. So let's say that um, I want to have things to do with, and then an, an array inside things to do with something else in there. We can say things completed could be inside things to do. Uh, so what do I, I've got, oops, oh, I'm, things completed, I've got one thing completed there, right? So let's say that I want to, um, I, wanna, I wanna add this things completed array in the array itself in the first element of things to do. So if I say things to do, so I'm, I'm knocking bird, I'm knocking two stones with one, or sorry, two birds with one stone here. Dot insert um, zero things completed. Okay, now let's take a look at things to do because it's gonna look a little bit different than what I've just been showing. Now, these other ones, these other elements are, are mostly unchanged and they don't actually, if you can access them the same way. So if you type in things to do and then uh, in the square brackets one or two or three, four or five, six, you get the same exact uh, response as you have seen prior. This one is a little bit different because there's another set of square brackets here. It's an array in, or a list inside of a list. So to access uh, study for class by itself, just to get this response, not the square brackets inside, of, uh, not the square brackets itself, uh, you have to do, you have to follow up with an additional array element uh, or index number call. So um, prior to this, we've been doing things to do one, for example, right? That's gonna get me clean my room. Um, but if I do zero, as you can see, it's these square brackets inside the return, um, that it's stating that this is actually another array. So if I do another zero after that, I get the return similar to um, things, uh, things to do, which is clean my room. So let's say that I, um, I did one of my things, right? So let's say that I did I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pop off do laundry and I'm gonna add it to this guy here, which is another list, uh, which is this list right here. So let's pop off things to do dot pop and then we're gonna add it to things uh, to do 
dot, or sorry, zero dot append. So we're going to take it out of the master or the parent list and then add it to the sub list here. So we're doing this first, again, the inside most part in the parentheses, then we're going to append it to this list. Now we're calling it with a zero because zero because the zeroth element is another list inside of the inside of the first list. So we can do this. So we can say, okay, zero, since the zeroth element is another list, we can call the append method. We couldn't do this if the, if we called it in the first one, because this isn't another list, it's just a string. So there we go. Now if we take a look at things to do again, we popped it off, do laundry, it's gone, but we added it to this list here. And Basically what I'm showing you is like, this is a nested list right here. We can pop it off the, the parent list, add it to a nested list, and this is how nested list works. So for me to access the element do laundry, uh, things to do, just like how I did um, the first one before. So zero, which is this zeroth element, this whole thing. And then it's the first element inside this whole thing because study for classes, is a, uh, sorry, it's the, second element, which is number one inside that whole thing. Uh, the first element, which is zero, is study for class. So we do one, and then we get do laundry. And that's how you access items in a nested uh, in a nested list. And sometimes like you might want to have like a nested list for like different things. Um, if you have, uh, for example, uh, specifications of a certain of a certain item in your array, uh, you could have it in there and then that would make things a little easier, a little more clean. Um, however, this example, basically what I've been doing is I've on this master on this parent list or on the parent side, I've got like all the things to do. And then on the sub list or second, uh, list inside the first list, I've been adding it to them because as long as it's inside the second list, then I've completed them. Um, that's how I sort of generalize it. This is not a very good example. If you were to do this in a, in a in a uh, actual work environment, don't do this. Don't do a, a, a list inside of list where items uh, are completed or tasks are completed and you put them in this in this fashion. Don't do that. Add them to another completely d different list, like an actual like things completed list. So I'll pop it off the things to do list and pop and then put them in the things completed list. My objective here is to show you how nested lists work and how exactly like you can pop off um, or how a, a nested method call works, like like so, like having uh, how Python does, or actually any programming language does any everything that's inside the, the innermost parentheses, and then it goes outwards. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and move on to dictionaries. So a dictionary is is a key value where a a um, a list is uh, just a sort of like an abstract or uh, length of arrays or of, of items, um, whatever they might be, a dictionary has to have a key value. So let's, let's, let's get started. So I'm going to go back to my info and I'm going to make it into a dictionary. And I've made one, this was the list. This what this particular one right here. It said Mo Ali, which is my name, age is 32, Lexus, whatever, yada, yada, yada. But I'm going to recreate my info into a dictionary. So instead of having Mo Ali as, an, as a, just a item or an element in an array, uh, I'm going to say the name is Mo Ali. And then the age is uh, 32. And uh, car make is Lexus. Excuse me. Um, house type. I'll make it two words. Uh, is townhouse. And um, career is DevOps. And I made a mistake here. Okay, so where we declare, in, just in Python only, where we declare the uh, data type of arrays with square brackets, uh, and we call the element number with a number inside square brackets, in dictionaries or maps, however you want to call them in Python, they're, formally, they're namely called dictionaries, you declare them with curly braces. So if I say my info now, uh, and you see it, 
as these curly braces. And the idea here is that like where we, um, when we wanted to get a return of a specific element in lists, we had to use a number. And for anybody that would work in any programming language, you have to figure out that you need to know which number exactly is name, which number is age, which number is car make and house type and career. You don't want to have that in memory. So like you don't want the programmer to know that. You don't want that as like common shared knowledge. So what you do is you have this named um, named sort of variable. So if I say my info and then I want to get the person's name, it says it calls this key and returns that value. So if I say age, calls this key and returns that value. Similar to where we use the um, the square brackets to get the element number, where we use the square brackets and the number to get the to get the value. Here we use the square brackets and the key, which is in this case name, to get the value Mawali. And that's really all it, all it is. So we can do, for example, age and car make and house type and so on and so on. Now we also, just like in, in array slash lists, how we can do pop and sort of and everything sort of that, we, uh, there are also methods in, in, uh, in dictionaries as well. We can clear the dictionary, we can get the keys of the dictionary, we can get the values of the dictionary, we can pop the, dic uh, the last item or the last key from the dictionary and from items and so on and so on. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Uh, I'm just gonna go through like the common ones that I use, for example, so if I do, uh, dot items. It tells you the dictionary items and the same thing. So this is a different data type that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. This is these the ones in parentheses are actually called tuples. Tuples are a couple with a specific. Um, they are they are immutable. That means that inside this they can't be changed. Um, dictionaries and arrays they can be changed, but. Uh, the the tuples cannot be changed. So for example, if I wanted to change something in things to do, right? Oops. Like let's say that I want to change clean my room into something else. Or let's say I want to just, you know, uh, change this into something else. So I can just say things to do zero is equal to uh, something changed. And I can do that because the zeroth element already exists. And it won't give me an error saying that the list uh, element number doesn't exist. And it just took this whatever I had in the zeroth element, which was this whole list, and then just changed it to something changed. So now if I take a look at you know, things to do, there you go. In tuples, you cannot do that. If you were to if you were to work with just a tuple, for example, just this value, you can't say my info and then square bracket zero change name to uh, with a lowercase n. It'll just return that it, this is immutable. You can't change a tuple. It doesn't work. Tuples are only uh, two uh, two elements long each tuple because they are a couple. Couples are tuples. Um, so, or you can call them tuples. Some people call them tuples. That's how they. I don't know if that's how they're pr pronounced. I pronounce them tuples. So that being said, like when you want to work with sort of like sensitive data, you might want to use uh, a tuple or a tuple uh, compared to a dictionary and so on. So let's go ahead and move on to more methods in dictionary. So let's go ahead and take a look at my info. And what else do we have here? We've got, oops, dot um, keys. Keys will return just the keys. So for example, it'll return just name, just age, and so on. But it'll return them in an array. So this is the array. Uh, if I say, for example, uh, type. Oh, sorry, it returns them in a type dictionary keys, but the dictionary keys has an inside uh, type of an array. Um, but anyway, so you can say uh, keys, uh, sorry, my info keys, and then whatever the zero of key is going to, oh, wait, no, you can't do that in dictionary keys. Oh, mistake. I thought you could do that since it's an array. Um, but anyway, so you can actually loop through this and then you know loop through name, age. These are all the keys that you can have, like all the possibilities that you can have in uh, possibility calls you can make in the dictionary. Um, so that being said, I don't think we need to look at any more, but let's let's take a look at one more uh, method that you can use. So let's say get, 
Now, when we looked at the keys, we saw that Lexus was a key in myinfo.keys. It's actually, or sorry, carmake was a key in myinfo.keys. So let's go ahead and do get and then car make. And it says Lexus. This is actually the equivalent of this. Um, car make, the exact same thing. The idea is that like, um, if you were to do this, you can't make a sort of nested call. Well, you can make a nested call, but like this is a more declarative term where um, some people might favor this method because this is actually a method call. It's getting a value from a key inside the dictionary. And some people just might favor this this way instead. This is the older style where you use the square brackets to to make the, the uh, return from make the return of a key inside a dictionary. Um, this is more the new method. Uh, some people prefer this, and I actually prefer this. So if you if you want to use it this way, that that's up to you. So any more that we should go up to? So update, copy, update is fairly self-explanatory. It says it turns the dictionary. So you can say actually, let's take a look what update says on the actual documentation. So Python dictionary. Uh, let's look at dictionary methods, and I actually like W3 schools. They're really good. So let's take a look at update. An example of update would be uh, update. You're adding this dictionary onto the already existing dictionary, and then it would sort of merge the two into one dictionary rather than having a nested dictionary. So if I say, for example, um, what else can I say about me? I guess uh, height. Um, pretty short at 5.6 and we'll end it there. So now if I do my info and there's my height, it's right there. So rather than having a nested dictionary, which we'll talk about in, in a second, um, you just sort of merge the two uh, dictionaries into one whole dictionary. As long as you don't have conflicting names, like for example, if these if these uh, existing key names aren't there, the merge should be just fine. So if I try to merge in a new height, um, actually no, this, if I try to do this now, let's say 5.8, it would probably, I think it would update the existing height. Let's, let's double check, it might not give us an error. Yep, it updated the existing height from 5.6 to 5.8. And all right, so now let's go ahead and talk about nested dictionaries. And you can have a nested dictionary with a nested uh, array or nested dictionary. Let's, let's, let's start with the first with a nested dictionary to make it a little more simple. And then we'll mix and match the array and things get a little more complicated from there on. Um, so make sure that I've got enough for you guys to see. Um, all right. Let's get started with my info, and then we're gonna go ahead and add. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add. Let's see, uh, job history, right? And then that's gonna be where I used to work. So Amazon. I used to be a uh, data center technician, so DCT for short. Um, AWS, also Amazon. I used to work as a um, as a cloud engine, cloud support engineer. And Yahoo, again DCT. Uh, Circuit City, they're now gone. Well, it was just sales. Anyways, let's just stop there. So now if I take a look at my info, I'm going to have this nested dictionary. So everything else is fine. You, you can call my info name and you get Molly. And we can call my info townhouse you, or my info house type, you get townhouse. But as soon as you do job history, you're going to get this new uh, dictionary that's inside the old dictionary. So if I say job history, just like how we did in in um, in arrays, we get this 
dictionary inside this dictionary. And then this dictionary has its own set of um, methods that you can call and everything else that you can do with it. So if I say values, it gets me all the values of all the keys. If I say items, and these are all the items and tuples and so on. So now I'm working with, if I say, as long as I have this job history, I'm working with the inside most, or I guess in this case, the inside most, um, but I'm working with this particular dictionary inside this dictionary. So this is what a nested dictionary looks like. Um, so you can have a key that results to another dictionary, just like you can have, a, have an index value that results to another array. Um, so now let's go ahead and mix and match the two. So before we do that, I'm actually gonna remove um, job history real quick so we can go ahead and, and mix and match the two. So my info dot, uh, remove is not an item. So let's do pop item. I think you can actually, yeah, I think you can actually specify the item. I might be wrong here. So job history. Yeah, you can't do that. So let's do, is there anything that actually deletes the item? Set default, pop keys, copy, clear, clear. Removes all items. Nope, I don't want to remove all items. I want to just pop remove specified key. That's what I want to do. I, can, I don't care about the return, but let's get rid of job history. Yep, and now if I take a look at uh, my info, we're back to just the height and no longer have job history. So we're going to add job history back in again. Um, except for I'm not going to have it where I have it by company and then the position. I'm just going to have the company and that's about it. Um, or I can have the company and the multiple positions that I had uh, with said company. So let's do it that way instead. So I'm going to add the dictionary back in for job history is equal to, let's say, Amazon. But now I'm going to have a list inside Amazon. So one of them is going to be DCT. Uh, I was also the DCT trainer. So I taught people to be data center technicians. Um, and I also worked as a cloud support oops, associate and eventually a cloud support engineer. So that is. Um, that and then I also worked at Yahoo as a data center technician uh, at Circuit City I was oops I was sale or computer sales and then I was also camera sales Worked at Car Electronics. Let's see, what else did I do there? I worked at Media. I think it was called Media. I don't exactly remember. Anyways, let's just stop there. So now let's take a look at my, my info. Is so if I say my info, I get all this information, and it's sort of overwhelming, if you to, to say the least, right? But if I say my info.name again, same thing happens. I just get my name. But if I say now job history, oops, I get all this information. So I can say, okay, well, I clearly worked at Amazon. Uh, I also worked at Yahoo and Circuit City. So I also worked at a few other places, but let's just take a look at what Amazon would return. So now if I wanted to, Again, if I wanted to access a dictionary inside a dictionary, I have, to, I have to provide the key of that inside dictionary. So I'm going this sort of backwards. Instead of inside out, I'm going outside in. So first, I'm going through my info. I'm going to job uh, history. 
Then inside job history, I'm going to go inside this key. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So my info, job history, Amazon, right? Amazon returns this whole list, as we saw before. Um, from the parent, this is the list. So it starts here and ends here, these two brackets. And this is a list or an array, and you can call it like you can call like an index value. So if I say, like for example, zero, it's going to return DCT. And if I say one, it's going to be DCT trader, so, trainer. So that's exactly um, uh, what we want. So this is how a nested one works. So you have, uh, you can do a dictionary on the outside with a dictionary on the inside with an, with an array slash list on the inside of that. You can even go backwards where you can have a list on the outside and a dictionary on the inside and further dictionaries on the inside, depending on how you want to structure the data. So let's take a look at that one as well. Um, so we're going to create, Maybe I should go ahead and create a new one instead of using my info. Leave my info as an example if I need to get back to it. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so my, uh, let's say, let's say not task. Uh, we can say, um, uh, life history, right? So I'm going to go with, I was born. And then I went to school or elementary school, uh, elementary to high school. And then uh, jobs, or let's say I worked at, let's say instead of that, let's say now I want to link, um, I want to have this job history inside this element. So I'm going to say my info, uh, job history, right? And I'm going to close that. So oops, uh, life history is not defined. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to do the equal sign. Now let's do let's look, take a look at life history. Now, the outermost uh, part of this array is obviously an array. If I say life history zero, I was born whenever I was born. And then I went through elementary to high school because I live in the United States and I had to go through all that. And obviously, um, but now when I take a look at uh, element number two, it gives me this dictionary. Now we have an array with a dictionary inside. And we can do this. Um, the reason why you would want to do this sometimes is basically what if you need multiple dictionaries for the same data type? Uh, for example, like if you have um, a car, you need to have the specifications of a car. So let's say that, uh, okay, let's, let's walk through that, right? So let's make a car is equal to a array. So we're going to have colors. Um, so the first element is going to be colors. So let's say that base color is RGB, right? So let's say base color is red. And then you need to mix in um, blue. Uh, so first mix is blue. And so on and so on, right to make the final color, whatever it might be. And then you need to have the engine. So uh, so the second is going to be displacement, um, cylinder type or displacement, let's say 2.5 because I, or 3.5 because I have a 3.5 liter car. Um, and then cylinder type or injection type. Uh, I can say ported and injected, and so on. Right? Oops, invalid syntax because I got too many. So now, if I take a look at a car, I've got all this information about a car. I don't particularly need them in any order whatsoever. So, like, I don't care if the first element returns me the displacement or the engine stuff, and the second element returns me the color stuff. It doesn't matter as long as I have them in there. Uh, that's the that's the return type I'm going to work for, and it's going to be documented somewhere. Um, that's the that's sort of like the advantage that a uh, an outside list versus an inside list gives. 
where an inside list um, sort of returns uh, like this, for example, your job history, you can have, okay, you worked at Amazon and give me all, give me a list of all the positions you were in Amazon. So likely in your, in your career, you're going to, you're going to run into um, where you use an inside list with an outside dictionary more. Um, but there are sometimes cases where it's the, where it's the uh, latter than the former. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, but because I think I've been recording for quite a while now and it's been definitely been over 20 minutes. Um, but that's a that's a brief thing about about uh, arrays and dictionaries, and I can have I can nest uh, arrays and dictionaries, and you can mix and match your nests of arrays and dictionaries. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop here, and in the next video I'm gonna go ahead and talk about uh, sets and tuples, which should be fairly quick. All right, so I'll see you guys then.